What's up, guys? It's Friday, and so you know what time it is. It's time for What the Fitness. That was my Pavarotti. What'd y'all think? Probably not gonna quit my day job. What the f So I just pull up TikTok, check my mentions, and I just wanna tell you all on TikTok who follow me, I appreciate you, thank you. And actually, I see that somebody has sent me a video. Actually, I'll give him a shout. Gus.vo has sent me a video that I actually now realize I got this video quite a lot from people on Instagram as well. People wanted me to comment on it, and it's from a user whose Instagram I think is just named Charlie, and I'm pretty sure I know where it's going, but let's listen in and see what it says. I think I have the answer to why so many Americans are overweight even though they're dieting and exercising. So first off, the text on the screen says, is it possible? to gain weight in a caloric deficit. Spoiler alert, no it's not. People are telling me that it's impossible to gain weight if you're eating less calories than you burn. It is possible. We've been documenting this for 10 weeks. I've seen Charlie clean it in all of us. The rest of this episode is gonna be the science of why I've gained weight despite doing everything right. What does my blood work say? You're insulin resistant. The primary role of insulin is to block any other form of energy utilization in the body. So this means- Oh, uh, here we go. The insulin zealots. So I'm going to explain why this is bullshit. So this means- If I've got fat over here and insulin rises, you cannot burn fat. Behind every stupid claim, there's some physician out there who never had basic nutritional science. Calories in versus calories out means nothing. It means nothing. We're gonna work on means bringing nothing. the insulin resistance down. 30 grams of protein within 30 minutes of waking, followed by 30 minutes of steady state cardiovascular exercise. The weight will fall off. What about hit training? You go to the gym, your body needs energy. It cannot use fat. He said no hit training. You're Whoa. burning your muscles. So that's a lot of bullshit in a short period of time. You know, I think this guy's probably trying to help people, but let's just first address this. You can gain weight in a calorie deficit. No, you cannot. The energy you consume in food form is the energy, the calories, because calories is a unit of heat which measures the energy content of food. Calories refer to the chemical energy that is stored in the bonds of food. You cannot create energy out of nothing. In order to gain mass, it means you would need to create carbons out of nothing. That is not possible. Now, there are a lot of people who think they've been in a calorie deficit and gained weight. Usually, this is for one of a few reasons or a combination of reasons. The first being, people are horrible at tracking their nutritional intake. There was a study done in people who were obese who self-reported that they could not lose weight on low calories. They reported that their average intake was 1200 calories per day. Their actual intake was close to 2000 calories per day, almost double. I think it was a 47% difference between their reported calories and the amount of calories they actually ate. And this is even after the researchers told them, we will know if you are under-reporting. They also over-reported their activity by 53%. Now, a lot of people, this is very attacking to them. They're saying, you're calling me a liar. I don't think necessarily that people are lying. I think that people have a horrible understanding of what's actually in food. In fact, I once heard somebody who had said, well, you know, I'm, I'm eating chicken and rice every day and I'm not losing weight. Well, they were eating fried chicken and rice and they were like, oh, the way you cook it matters. And it's like, yeah, yeah, it matters. Also, oil. You can just toss 50 grams of oil on something and visibly it looks no different than if it has very little oil. So if you're eating out, you have absolutely no idea what you're taking in. People are really horrible estimators of their food intake and calorie intake. That's one. They also tend to overreport activity as we saw in this study as well. And a lot of people see what's read out on these and they say, oh, see, see, I'm eating 1500 calories a day and I'm burning, you know, 500 during exercise. And then you find out they actually eat back the calories that they were burning during exercise. Well, these, these watches have been shown from a meta-analysis recently to overestimate exercise energy expenditure by 28 to 93%. Meaning that if it said you burned 500 calories, you probably burn something more along the lines of 250 to 400 calories. What do you think is more likely? That you're violating the laws of thermodynamics or that your watch might not be accurate? Oh gee, let me think. Furthermore, a lot of people eat in a calorie deficit during the week 
and then they binge eat on the weekends. And so I've got news for you, calories still matter on the weekends. So if you eat 2,000 calories during the week and you eat 4,000 calories on the weekend, you're probably actually in a slight surplus. Then we come to things that people don't track. Licks, bites, snacks. They grab a handful of nuts, they don't track it. That shit can add up to hundreds of calories over the course of the day, and people don't tend to track alcohol. Alcohol has seven calories per gram. So people say, well, I'm, I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm drinking Michelob Ultra, it only has two grams of carbs, or I'm having shots of vodka, there's no carbs in it. Vodka still has 64 calories per ounce. So if you have five shots of vodka, which is each shot's an ounce and a half, that's seven and a half ounces, that's almost 500 calories. Boom, right there. You might be feeling good, but you just added 500 calories to your diet and you probably didn't even realize it. And then what happens when you're intoxicated? Do you make good food choices? Not particularly. And you're probably not very accurate at estimating what you ate either. All those things being said, what about his other claims? You can't burn fat if you have insulin present. First off, we know this is trash because what about all of the bodybuilders who get to be the leanest human beings on earth, many of whom eat 200 to 400 grams of carbohydrate per day, and many of whom in the non-tested organizations take what? Exogenous insulin. So how can that be true? Easy, it's not true. When it comes to insulin, one of the things they said is you're insulin resistant. So we've gotta improve your insulin resistance in order for you to lose weight. First off, there's no evidence that you need to do that. Second, they're reversing the cart and the horse. If you lose weight, you become more insulin sensitive, regardless of the method used. In fact, there was a study back in the 1970s where they had men go on what they called a rice diet. And most of them were very overweight and obese and insulin resistant. Their primary sources of food were white rice, sugar, fruit juices, and I think like white bread. Their average weight loss was around 100 pounds and they all became insulin sensitive. Because what? They were in da 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 calorie deficit. Furthermore, there is no evidence that being insulin resistant makes it harder for you to lose weight. In fact, a meta-analysis actually showed that people who were insulin resistant lost just as much weight as people who were not. Which, if you think about the physiology of insulin resistance, it actually makes sense because if you're insulin resistant, it means you're also insulin resistant in fat cells and not getting the same influence of insulin on your adipose tissue, which means you should actually lose more fat. In fact, people who are obese or insulin resistant not only lose just as much or more weight than comparative people who are lean or non-obese, but they also have, tend to have higher metabolic rates. So this idea that, well, you're insulin resistant and that's why you can't lose fat, that is completely nonsense. People who are insulin resistant and obese tend to be much worse estimators of the nutritional intake. They tend to have greater hunger signals. They tend to be less sensitive to satiety signals and they tend to possibly have greater metabolic adaptation. So those things are working against them. I'm not saying that all obese people or type two diabetic people are just like that because they are lazy. That is not what I'm saying. There are genetic influences that make a difference, but insulin doesn't seem to be one of them. In fact, the most effective drug treatment for obesity that we have is something called semiglutide. It is a GLP-1 mimetic that thus far appears to be extremely helpful in people losing weight. The average weight loss in the study was 15% of body weight. You know what semiglutide also does? Raises your insulin. So if it was true that insulin was the reason that you couldn't lose weight, then how could people do nothing other than add this drug and lose weight if it also raised their insulin? You know why they lose weight? Because it's also an appetite suppressant a powerful appetite suppressant, and they eat less calories. So what does that mean? Oh, it must mean that like calories actually matter. As far as their claim of don't do HIIT workouts because HIIT workouts don't burn fat. I've covered this many times on this channel. What you burn during exercise means absolutely nothing for actual loss of body fat. Listen to me. There is a difference between burning fat and the actual loss of body fat. If you eat a shitload of dietary fat, you will burn a lot of fat. You will also store a lot of fat because you're eating a lot of fat. 
The loss of body fat comes down to how much you store versus how much you burn. So if you do a HIIT workout, which is glycolytic, meaning it will use glucose as the primary form of substrate for energy, yes, you will burn mostly glucose during that workout. And then as your body tries to compensate by replenishing glycogen, guess what you burn mostly the rest of the day? <gasps> fat. It's almost like your body is smarter than you are. Interesting. If you do low intensity, you will burn more fat and then you will burn more carb the rest of the day because your body's smarter than you. And then when we look at studies that compare overall workload in terms of like miles traveled, if we're talking about like hit from running versus walking, if they compare overall workload and the actual loss of body fat, meaning they measured body composition and not just substrate utilization, you know, the actual thing we care about, body composition, they see the same amount of fat loss. So that's not saying HIT is better, it's just saying that either one will work. This idea that, oh, if you do HIT, you can't lose body fat. Yeah, tell that to the Olympic sprinters, guys. Oh, by the way, did you know that Usain Bolt eats like 50 chicken nuggets a day or something stupid like that? Oh, how is, how is his insulin? Oh, interesting. It's almost like the amount you burn versus the amount you eat makes a difference in how much you lose. It's funny how that works. Again, I'm sure this guy's trying to help people, but that video just set nutrition science back about 50 years. All right, guys, if you liked the video, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll catch you next week. I'm out.